do you often wonder what does gold ore look like or how do I identify gold ore out there in the field? and strategies helped me to recover over four ounces of gold in 2023 and by learning some of these tips and strategies you too could potentially find ounces of gold now i am certainly no geologist i am definitely no expert by any stretch of the imagination but i do have some experience with proven results but before we start i want to give you a very important tip I want you to remember and to take note that 99% of gold is found in quartz. However, 99% of quartz has no gold. But wait, there's something else I want you to remember, and that is finding gold rarely happens by luck. It happens through strategically planning and prospecting to increase the potential and the likelihood of finding gold. So when you're out there in the field, having an understanding of what gold ore is, is important, especially if you want to take it home and to sample it. Hiring a professional mineral assayer is the ideal method, but it's not always practical and affordable. Fortunately, there are alternative ways to gain a good indication of whether that rock that you pick up off the ground may contain gold. In this video, we'll explore some simple and effective methods to help you identify gold ore and increase your chances of striking gold in the field. So I wanna start off by talking about large quartz boulders or large quartz structures that you see out in the field. There's a good chance that if you are seeing these large quartz boulders, that they potentially have no gold. Not always, but more than likely. Why? It's because these large quartz boulders are typically barren of the minerals and the elements associated with gold, like the ions, the pyrites, etc. You see, if these boulders were rich in ions, and the minerals that are associated with gold, they would have more than likely be eroded and broken down and they wouldn't still be a large quartz structure. They would be quartz float on the ground. So gold will typically be found in or with quartz that has decomposed. Thanks to the iron and the other minerals eating away at the quartz and liberating the gold. Gold rich quartz, it doesn't look clean and healthy. Gold rich quartz is like a $5 hooker. It's ugly, skanky and dirty. It's potentially brittle and will be broken down and looks like it's been to hell and back. Gold will almost always hitch a ride in quartz with her ugly hooker friends. Iron, pyrite, arsenopyrite, calcopyrite. These oxidize to create the iron oxide minerals, the gunmetal greys and the, the black minerals. It's important to note that the presence of these minerals does not guarantee the presence of an economically valuable gold deposit. The occurrence of gold and its associated minerals depends on a complex geological process and the specific characteristics of each deposit. Detailed exploration and analysis are typically required to determine the economic viability of gold deposits. 
and the potential for gold extraction. So getting back to this Colgate Teeth Commercial Bright White Quartz, the milky clean quartz, it's more than likely not going to bear any gold. So just remember when you're out there in the field to look for the $5 hooker quartz. It's ugly, it's dirty, it's wasting away. So let's talk briefly about the two main types of gold occurrences that us as gold prospectors are interested in. And the first one is quartz veins. One of the most common occurrences of gold, gold bearing quartz veins are formed when gold rich hydrothermal fluids, meaning fluids from deep within the earth's crust, typically associated with hot mineral rich fluids. They are deposited in fractures and cracks in the earth's crust. Now over time, these fluids cool and the gold particles precipitate out and accumulate in the quartz veins. Quartz veins are often mined for the gold using underground or open pit mining methods. Let's talk about placer or alluvial deposits. Placer deposits are another common occurrence of gold. Placer deposits are formed when gold is liberated or eroded away from its original source rock and it is transported by water such as rivers and streams and the gold settles in riverbeds, it settles in sandbars or other areas of low energy flow where over time they accumulate. Placer deposits can be found in rivers, streams, alluvial plains and beach sands and are often mined using mining methods such as panning, sluicing or dredging. Now, if you've done some gold prospecting with a metal detector before, you've probably heard of the term, look for salt and pepper on the ground. This means that there's a noticeable amount of quartz scattered on the surface with other fragments of rock. Usually these rocks are iron rich stones. So the quartz is the salt and the iron, the pepper. Okay, so does this mean you are guaranteed that gold will be found in these spots? Absolutely not. It definitely does not mean you will find gold there, but, but what it does mean is that your chances have improved drastically compared to before. Now, don't use salt and pepper as your only indicator of what to look for to find gold. But it's only logical that if there is a lot of quartz float and a lot of iron float scattered on the ground, there is a better potential that you're in a gold bearing area. However, all rocks in the gold fields have had billions of years of faulting, of movement, of erosion, of exposure and deformation and decay. Just to recap the key points, gold is very rare in the Earth's crust and is often found in small concentrations of rocks, soils and water. It is usually found in association with other minerals such as quartz, iron, pyrites and other sulphide minerals. It depends on the location. So the main message here is to not limit yourself to just that one indicator of potential gold bearing ground. Don't forget to look for the $5 hooker quartz. It's usually skanky, it's holy, it's dirty, it's stained. Healthy looking quartz that is still in place on the earth's surface is more than likely barren of gold. I hope you can give the video a thumbs up. I hope you can consider subscribing. My name is Matt. 
Stay safe out there and happy prospecting.